Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I'm Bob Fowler. What an honor and privilege it is for me to be with you today. I pray that wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, that you take the next few moments to open up your heart, get your expectation up and say, God, today, speak to me. We have not because we ask not. And when we ask, we ask amiss. We need to be specific in what we ask the Father to do in our lives because what Jesus has done and accomplished through his life, death, burial, and resurrection, it has brought to you and I such a great and rich treasure of opportunity in our lives. Everything, think of it, Everything that God has spoken in his word, God desires to do in your life. Let me say that again. Everything, every promise, every declaration, everything that Jesus spoke and the word of God declares that is yours, it is yours by faith if we believe it and we access it by faith. Faith. Well, we've been talking and we started yesterday about talking about the name of Jesus. And I have a little a little co-host today before we go any further. Carter is here today and he just woke up from his little nap and he's feeling a little groggy, which is a good thing. Hopefully he'll behave. But uh, I wanted to show him to you today. He's getting so big. I tell you, he's probably weighing about 12 pounds. Yes, you are. I'm going to have to teach him to look to that camera. But he is getting so big and he's so loving. Yes, he is. Okay, I'm going to set you down so we can get into the Word. Amen. I hope you're a pet lover. Amen. Because they are a blessing from the Lord. And uh, they're just, they're a gift from God. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to set you right there. That's your chair. You lay down. Just relax. There you go. That's a good boy. Let's get into this today because I believe that God has an incredible word for you. Asking in the name of Jesus. Yesterday, we spoke a little bit about the name of Jesus, what that name means to the believer. Now, that's who I'm talking to today because I'll be honest with you. An unbeliever, a person who has not received what Christ has done, is not going to experience the benefits that we have in that name. But if you're a believer, you have something that is greater than every trial, every difficulty, every pressure, every stress, every anxious moment that you would ever experience or face. And it comes by and through the name of Jesus. The word says in John 16 verses 23 and 24, and in that day you will ask me nothing, Jesus speaking. Now think of it, in that day, this is referring to post-resurrection. You've come to me for everything. You've, you've brought every question, but now there's going to be a change, and you're going to have to change with the change. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you that whatever you ask the Father, now think of it, prior to this, Men, in order to have any type of access to God, had to bring sacrifices, animal sacrifices, hoping and believing that somehow that they would be good enough in order for God to hear their prayer. Now, there's a change. And I just feel in my heart to say that some of you are going through a season of change. You're going to have to learn to let go of the past and take hold of the present. Let go of the way things used to be and take hold of the way things got the, the way things are. You're going to have to let go of those old mindsets and change. Listen, the hardest thing to change is a made up mind. And if we hold on to things so tightly, we're going to be challenged and frustrated to take hold of what God is doing. There's a season in all of our lives that we go through. As you look back in your life, there are moments, there are occurrences, there are, there are times and seasons in your life. But every season has an end. And it's learning to let go of the old so you can take hold of the new that enables you and I with joy, 
with anticipation and expectation to take hold of what God is doing. God wants to do something, and I don't know why I'm sharing this other than the Holy Spirit's leading me to say it. God wants to do something new in your life today that he wasn't doing yesterday. He wants you to see something new today that you didn't see yesterday. Now, thank God for yesterday. Thank God for the victories. Thank God for the things that we learned through our trials. But when we take those things into today, but God's got a new, new word for you today, a fresh word for you today, an experience for you today, and it's anticipating it, opening your heart and receiving it, that will enable you to walk out that promise and to walk out what God has for you today. All right. The name of Jesus. Prior to Jesus, men would bring sacrifices to the temple and hope that those sacrifices were sufficient in order for their petitions to be heard. Then Jesus comes. They, they get used to coming to Jesus, drawing from Jesus, questioning Jesus, getting answers from Jesus, but Jesus foretells their future and how their relationship with God is going to change and says, in that day, post-resurrection, after I've gone back to the Father, you're not going to ask me anything. You're going to go directly to the Father. Now, let me just say something. So often when we think of asking, we think of prayer. And listen, there are moments, prayer is simply communication with God, but there are moments that we're just walking around, driving around, thinking, doing our thing, on our job, and a thought comes to us. When you experience that, that is time to go before the Father and say, Father, I thank you that I have access to you now. I thank you that my relationship through what Jesus has done is in you. I thank you that just as Jesus came to you, I now can come to you. And that's what I wanted to point out to you. Jesus had clear, direct communication with the Father. Now, in the name of Jesus and by and through what he has done, you too have access directly to the Father. You don't have to go through an intermediary here on earth. You don't have to go through a priest, a pastor, a minister. You can go directly as Jesus did to the throne of grace. Now, I don't know about you, but that excites me. I like that I don't have to wait. I don't have to delay. I can go directly whenever I choose to the throne of God. Why? Because of what, how? Because of what Jesus did through his life, death, burial, and resurrection. Now, friend, I, I, let me tell you something. If we were not able to do that, if we were not able to ask the Father, petition the Father, pray to the Father, how different would your life be as a believer. Mine would be empty. It would be void of purpose. It would be void of potential and power. But now I can go as Jesus went directly to the throne of the Father in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that all of my needs are met in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that I'm the blessed, I'm the whole, I'm the healed, I'm the encouraged, I'm the joyful. I, I'm what you have paid for through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I thank you that I am complete in him, in the name of Jesus. Let's read on. Jesus said in John 14, verses 12 through 14, Most assuredly, I say to you that he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. The name of Jesus. You know, these programs are to make you sensitive to the value, the worth, and the power that you have received as a believer. 
how often we delay and we procrastinate and we put off speaking with the Father. Taking advantage of the, 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 the gift that we've been given as children of God to be able to come before the Father, bring our petitions and make them known to the Father, and let Him know that I am here only because of what Jesus has done. How, how many times do we put those moments off? Do we delay those things? But if we will come to the Father and be, continue to develop our relationship that we have been so graciously given in what Jesus and by what Jesus has done with the Father, how much different would our life be? Father, thank you for this day. Father, thank you for the grace that you've given me. Thank you for the life that you've chosen for me. Thank you that everything that is going on in my life has purpose. I thank you that I'm in your will. I thank you that you're guiding me by your spirit. I thank you for all of these things and more in the name of Jesus. Because when we declare the name of Jesus, we are reminding ourselves, but acknowledging what Jesus has done, fulfilled and accomplished through his cross. How often should we communicate with the Father? Should it only be in times of prayer? No. We can come boldly because we have access by what Jesus has done through his name at any moment that we desire. You don't have to be any in, you don't have to be in any special place. You don't have to be in church. You don't have to be in a temple. You don't have to be in a cathedral. Right where you're at, you can come before the Father. If you're an unbeliever, you can say, "Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you." And immediately he will hear you. And you can acknowledge, "I need Jesus in my life." I thank you for what he has done through his death, burial, and resurrection. And I receive his payment on the cross and through the resurrection for my life to remove my sins and to make me a child of God. You know, it, it's, it's a prayer of opening your heart. It's a prayer of asking him, inviting him, welcoming him, and accepting him. And when you do from that moment on, you can come directly to the Father in the name of Jesus and bring your petitions and make your request known. Listen, sometimes we get overwhelmed. Sometimes life gets a little busy, gets a little anxious. Sometimes our thoughts become a little scattered. But as we slow down and as we begin to talk and communicate to the Father and say, Father, thank you that this is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice, and I'm going to be glad in it. I'm going to focus my thoughts on you. I'm going to thank you that you are in control of my life, and that all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord and to those who are the called according to his purpose. God, thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your provision. Have a communication. Develop your relationship with the Father. You not only have a relationship with Jesus because of what he has done, but greater than that, and the purpose in which Jesus came was to reconnect you and I back to the Father. The name of Jesus, where would we be without it? How would we pray how will we bring our petitions to God? How would we be able to trust God and his word? It would be impossible. But now we have been given the name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus, when we declare it, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord, I want to encourage you today as you go throughout your day, wherever you are and whenever you're watching this, to make sure you exercise the relationship that you have been given because of what Jesus has done for you and the name that he has given you, which is your access to have a relationship with the Father. And let me just tell you, it is an all-access pass to the Father. All of the word, all of the promises are yes and amen because you have been given the name 
of Jesus. Well, I pray that this program has been an encouragement to you and a blessing to you. If it has, please share with your friends on social media. Carter, do you have a social media platform? I'm going to have to look and see. If you do, I'm going to share this program with you. I want to encourage you to go to our YouTube page at Faith is a Victory Fellowship at YouTube and subscribe. There you're going to find all of our programs that we have done. Hey, one more thing. If these programs are a blessing to you, Listen, give us a shout out, give us a word of encouragement and go into the description section and there you're going to find several safe and secure ways in which you can invest and sow your financial seed into the ministry of Faith is a Victory Fellowship. We're supported and continued through your graciousness and your financial contributions. Thank you so very much. Well, until tomorrow, we love you. God loves you. And as always, my friend, never forget, he is faithful. God bless you.